All right, hey everybody. So thank you, Goldberg, for the introduction. I am Brandy. Um, I particularly focus on plant-based food. So really helping us to find simple, creative ways to add more fruits, vegetables, and whole grains to the diet. So we thought that today, since we're doing a food that's Instagrammable um, series, that we would do some of them have we a lot more familiar with the charcuterie board. Um, which is something that's become really popular. It's literally a board where you have like different meats and cheeses and veggies and nuts and things like that. But we're going to do a plant-based version of it today because we, um, we're not going to use any uh, dairy, but we're going to make uh, cashew cream cheese. I will also going to use, we're going to make a hummus, like a homemade hummus, just to kind of show you how simple and easy hummus is. I um, mean, we're also going to do some spiced nuts. I'm going to cut some vegetables up, put uh, put together a board, and then you guys are going to get your own vegetables that you can create your board with, and then we're going to take pictures at the end. So that's how we're going to get started. Will, Tabitha will be here to show you how to do those pictures. Yeah. All right, cool. So we're actually going to get started with the, um, we're going to get started with the, the hummus. Has everybody here had hummus before? Okay, so one of the, uh, the main ingredients in hummus is uh, little chickpeas. So chickpeas is the main ingredient. And then tahini, which is a sesame paste, is the other ingredient. Now, one of the things I like to always talk about when we make hummus is the order of operation. So similar to like when you're making a cake, right? When you make a cake, you cream together the butter and sugar first, then you drop the eggs in, then you put the flour in, right? You can't just dump it all in if you want a good end product. And hummus is the same way. So you can just throw everything into the food processor and hit blend. You'll get something kind of good. But that hummus that we used to that's very like, it's like creamy and smooth comes from following an order of operation. So we're going to start with that order of operation, being adding the tahini to the blender. But me, I like to just pull the oil off first because we don't really need it. So I now have the, the board spot. Ah, that's all <laughs> We poured it down. So we're going to take some tahini. And some lemon juice. And we're going to bring those together first. What are some of what are some of the flavors that we like when we get to the unique? Like what are some of the things you like to taste in it? No. <laughs> Lemon. Okay, no oh, okay. Sorry. <laughs> Never had hummus before, never had tahini before. Never had no, I think oh, this will be great. Okay, cool. So it's um it's a it's a fun. I want to say, and back in, I don't know, like the early 2000s, it became all the rave as like a high protein alternative to mayonnaise because it's so like creamy, but you're using the chickpeas, which gives you the fiber and the protein. Um, it's something that's very commonly available in like the Mediterranean diet, like they use it a lot with their um, like fresh veggies and things of that nature. It's I mean, I think it's, it's pretty, it's a pretty tasty dip for the spread as well. All right, so just to give us an idea of the process, because I always like to show process do you know, these things. So you put the tahini in, you thought it was kind of 
moved when we poured it out. We put the water and then we ended up with these like little chunks. And I'll put this on the camera so we can kind of see you know, this way. We actually see like there's these, these clumps. So any event that this happens, it means that you have not put enough moisture in it. So what you want to do is add more moisture. So I'm going to put some more lemon juice in here. Now the recipe that you have, um, you won't have to do so much of figuring this out, but sometimes if you're using especially a fresh lemon, you don't necessarily know how much juice is gonna come out of it, right? So it's just kind of nice to see this. If you, if you have a lemon, lemon juice and just put the cup measurements in, you're gonna end up not really having to adjust it. But like I say, I like to let people kind of see the process so that say for instance, you're not making a full batch, you just wanna make like a small batch, you have this ability to look through and kind of gauge and adjust and see this. Lemon here, get it back. You'll we'll see now with the right amount of moisture that we now have this smooth creamy paste. When we started, we had not enough moisture, it was clumpy. With this, we actually now have that smooth consistency. Now that we have this, we can start to add in our spices for the next thing that we add in. So we're going to do a little bit of minced garlic. I think it's going to bother you. Yes. Cumin. I forgot to grab cumin. But no. Oh, thank you. So at this stage, you're going to drop in your spices. So we're going to put garlic and we're going to put cumin. And we're going to also put a little bit of, thank you so much. <laughs> We're also going to put in a little bit of this right here, which is called aquafaba. Now, aquafaba is a fancy name for bean juice, right? Specifically, chickpea juice. Bean juice doesn't sound really exciting, so somebody called it aquafaba. Um, and what's cool about aquafaba is that it can replace oil in a recipe. It can replace egg in a recipe. Like literally, you could take this and you could make macaroons if you know how to make macaroons and whites. You could use aquafaba as a replacement. Now, to be really specific, you can't like scramble. Like when I say egg, you can't make like a scrambled egg omelet or anything like that. But anything that calls for eggs, like it's something that you're baking or something like in this instance, we're using it as an oil replacement. You can use aquafaba. So it's kind of a cool way to have the chickpeas in a can and be able to use the full version, like to use everything in the can versus just dumping it down the drain. All right, so you'll see here in this step, we have our creamy, it's creamy, a lot looser than it was before. We incorporated the aquafaba. It would have been oil, but because this is an oil free recipe, we're replacing the oil with the aquafaba. You still want to get that nice mouthfeel and that, um, that decadence that we're kind of looking for every time we put oil into a recipe. Now, the main player in this uh, party is the, uh, the chickpeas, so we're going to add these in now. And like I was saying, chickpeas are a great source of protein, great source of fiber, extremely versatile. Like today, we're using them in the form of a spread, but these chickpeas can be turned into different salads. If you smash them, they can kind of play um, 
they kind of play like a tuna fish a little bit. You kind of make like a tuna salad and you smash them. If you roast them and then break them up, um, they kind of play like a chicken salad. Um, what else can we do with those things? If you toast them for oh, one second, let's make some noise and then come back. All right, yet again, I want to show you process. That's always helpful just so we know. So here we put chickpeas in. And like I said, even though the um the like the recipe will give you the measurements, but we're looking for consistency, that changes based off of the, the chickpeas. So say for instance, there's some brands that the chickpeas they don't cook them that much, so they're a little harder. So you might need a little more moisture to kind of get them smooth, the softer the plants, not so much. And of course, if you make them yourself, you can kind of control um the depthness of them. So if you see, like, this is a little clumpy, not really a spread at all. So what we're going to do is add in some more of the aqua baba. Right now we have a nice creamy substance that you guys are going to taste once we start to build our board. This transfer and center, we're going to use the same thing to make some uh, some nut cheese. Now the fun thing about making um about nut cheese is that it tastes so much like when you guys will actually get a chance to try it, it tastes so much like um like a cream cheese, even though it's cashews. And cashews are one of the if you don't have any any nut allergies today. No, okay. If you don't have any nut allergies, it's definitely my um my recommended ship when we're doing um, a cheese that's not processed. Like, there are a lot of non dairy cheeses on the market, but a lot of them have a bunch of stuff in it. And if you've ever had real cheese, which I grew up eating the standard American diet, so I'm very familiar with what it's supposed to taste like, I don't think it tastes pretty much like cheese. So um, for you to compromise the, 
the health of it, and also not get the flavor of how the soy milk is formed. But this nut cheese I'm about to show you guys how to make, and I actually have the recipe for it. It's pretty simple, and it tastes really close to um, the cheese, and it gives you a lot of, um, there's a lot of opportunity to adjust this. So a lot of times when I make it, you want yeah. to clean that out? Please, yes. Okay. Thank you. A lot of times when I um when I make it, I'll do different versions of it. So you do like a base, which is like the first one, and then maybe one will have like chives and garlic, and then another one I may put like you know smoked paprika or something like that, just to kind of give different variations of it. In the meantime, what we'll do is get started on our roasted or still roasted uh spiced nuts that's something that's really uh very holiday number one but also a nice addition to a chicken to reward and also just a really nice simple snack like if you have some nuts in the house already and you just want to take them up a level shift them around a little bit this is a great way to just do it pretty simply on top of the stove without having to cut the oven and just don't wait for the pan to heat up what are some of the what are some things that you like to uh, serve at a party? Whenever you have a party, what are some of the things that you usually offer in your hosting? <laughs> What's usually what is what what are some of the things that you purchase that are already made? Okay, so like like things in the blanket or the house, you have little one. Uh, like the little, I don't know, I don't know what those things are, but like the little phyllo cups, like filled with something. Uh -huh. Double eggs. Double eggs, yes. Any other uh, party foods that we like to have around? Perfect, thank you. Yeah, those are some good ones. Double eggs, definitely. That's still be there. In the meantime, we'll go back to the cheese. Oh, um, so these are uh, cashews. What happened to the Oh, we lost them. I don't know why this TV has done this before to me. <laughs> So well, these nuts were soaking. The reason you soak them is so that when um, you build the, when you make the cheese, it's smoother. You can do them um, without soaking them, but then your cheese might be a little gritty. Um, so to kind of avoid that, we soak them first here. If you have a high pressure, just water. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Don't mind me coming behind you. Gone and that thing. Okay. Let's see what. Sit up to me yesterday. I left it alone for a while because nobody was watching anything. And then uh, we came all of a sudden I came in and it was on. So we have a okay. text TV. I just see these best of All right, well, keep on going. Yeah. It's being recorded and uh well, you see the live. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so this um we just put the nuts in um along with Because it doesn't exist and you want that flavor, 
nutritional yeast is going to be your friend. What's cool about nutritional yeast is that it actually is sourced from the ocean. So it has a really good source of um, vitamin B12 in it. I personally I always say I can never sell nutritional yeast on its own as cheese. So I would say, oh, take nutritional yeast and sprinkle it on popcorn and it's going to be just like cheese popcorn. No, it's not. But what it does is that it gives one of the notes when you're building cheese. So when we have cheese, cheese has a little bit of saltiness in it. Cheese has a little bit of sweetness. It has a little bit of um, sour. It has a little bit, of, I call it steak because it's like sour milk. So it's like a little bit of rotten in it. Um, and this just kind of adds to that collection to build that flavor. So nutritional yeast is really what's giving us that kind of cheesy thing that you're gonna taste when you get there. Also, you wanna add in some Vinegar, yes. Yeah, it tends to be in the spice section at the grocery store. And in the event it's not there, some grocery stores separate it and put it in like the natural, like they have like the natural food section. But it's a, it's a lot easier uh, to find now than it used to be, and they tend to put it there. So I bought this yesterday at Scalp and Shop, and that's exactly where I found it in the spice section. And not, not to be uh, mistaken with Fleischmann's making yeast. I, had, I taught a class before and everybody brought their own ingredients like two of the students have brought the, uh, the Fleischmann's made it yeast, which is totally a tease, but just not yeast that's going to give us the cheesy uh, feel that we want here. Then I added some lemon zest. Then that again, we're just building in those flavors. It, it, it's just a, you know, my own side, if you don't mind. Yeah. Um, you know, because I'm doing this and they call it flavor salt free. I find that when I add the lemon, I don't mix the salt as much. And I am a salt fanatic. And uh, so I find that adding a little lemon on everything actually makes it taste a little better. <laughs> I like that point. That's a great point. Same with lime. Lime does the same thing. Like lime in particular. Um, actually activates the um, the salt part of your taste buds, like the salty part of your taste buds. So it's really helpful for replacing salt in a recipe.
So it's a little thinner than I want it to be. So I'm going to add some more cashews to thicken it up a little bit. Now, I will give you guys a, um, when you make the cheese, make sure that you get raw cashews. The cashews that we're using today before roasted, um, they're, just a, they're just a little less stable in the recipe. So like you have to work with them a little more. No stress, but just the raw ones make it like a little easier in this, in this journey. Oh, the pot agree with me. Barbara, well, we didn't get a chance to prep you some salt yeah, and some brown sugar as well from the kitchen. Yeah. And it's coming to the rescue. Same, All right, so in the meantime, we're going to get our roasted nuts going. So this is a blend of almonds, cashews, and peanuts. And I don't know if you've ever put nuts into the oven. Thank you so much. Um, you put nuts into the oven, but when you put them into the oven, or you've ever had toasted nuts, they really, um, really enhance the flavor of them. 
Um, and so doing this on the stove does the same thing. I always recommend if you have the time, like even if you're putting nuts in, uh, to a salad or if you're going to put them on top of oatmeal or something, if you just want to take that extra step of just like putting them into a pan at first, it will just make it taste a little a little more exciting. When you go to eat out, a lot of times you're wondering like, oh, why do things outside of the house sometimes taste better than the things I made? It's those little types of things that they do that just shifts the food a little bit. Oven, you can, you can put it in the oven or on top. So I'm going to help you do it on top of the stove, yeah. You can also just put them in on a cookie sheet and put them into the oven as well. Or on top. I always use top. Yeah, so that works. But uh, you have to have a uh, non-steak, right? Not necessarily because there's natural oils in the nuts, so you don't necessarily need non-steak. Oh. Well, I probably think it's yeah, you'll start to kind of smell them. It's the I find that's like the best way. They they kind of uh go over like get burned a little bit, but they'll start to smell like uh, aromatic and toasty, and you'll know when it's gone. Oil in that either, right? No, just heat up. You just heat up the pan. Yes, heat the pan up. Put the um nuts in. The natural oils from the nuts will kind of um kind of come out as it heats up, and then you add the spices on, and then it'll adhere to the nut that way. So you heat the pan first. Yes, that's always the um the recommendation when you're cooking with no oil because if you put it into a cold pan, it's going to stick. But if you put it into a pan, it's warm, then it might. A couple of minutes. So I always like to give like the, the dancing reference for it. So when you put water into the pan, right? If you put the water into the pan and it just kind of sits there, that means the pan is too cold. But if you put water into the pan and it separates and then evaporates really quickly, it means it's too hot. But if you put it in and it starts dancing, then it's time to invite the other ingredients to the party. That's how I like to describe it. Yeah. <laughs> Any other questions while we wait for the pans to heat up? What is that pan made of? That's a good question. Let me tell you. Maybe uh maybe steel. I'm assuming maybe it's steel. It feels steely. Steel, yeah. Steel, right? Yeah. <laughs> That's what you feel like. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and it's pretty happy, so I think that's what it is too. And so what we're seasoning these nuts with, we're gonna do smoked paprika, chili powder, garlic powder, cayenne, brown sugar, um, and pepper. I don't know yet if I'm gonna add salt to the nuts because um, they were already salted. So I'm gonna spice them first, taste them, and then determine if we're gonna need to add extra salt. Meantime, we can uh, start to cut up some of the vegetables that we're gonna be putting on our board. So today, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take some peppers, we're gonna take an apple. We're gonna also add in some mint, but I won't grab that into the end because it's more of a uh, decoration piece than anything. And also some cucumber. And we're gonna cut these peppers. The peppers are gonna, you're gonna get them in two ways. We're going to cut them open, and we're also going to get some slices of them as well. So I personally really, just a little tip about mini peppers in general, like they're one of my favorite things to kind of replace a chip with. So say, for instance, you just uh, wanted to have like a uh, chip-free um, platter, but you wanted to still have like dips and stuff. If you cut them um, in half, they're like the perfect thing to like scoop up guacamole, or salsa, or hummus, or something like that. So it's a great way to add veggies to your diet, um, but still get that crunch that you're after when you're having a chip. 
These are also really, really good if you are seasoning them with a little bit of curry powder. Put them into a bit on a baking sheet and just roast them at about 400 degrees for maybe about 10 minutes. And they're just really good. And I don't even cut them open when I do that. I literally just keep them whole, season them with the spice, put them into the oven, and they're just a really nice snack. That's how they make going. Yes. Yep. Yep. It's one of my favorite ways to do them, especially when they're at the end of their life and you're like, oh, what do I what do I do with these before they go bad? Like season them up, roast them. Exactly. And like a cookie sheet, right? Yes. Which is true. 400. I've got a little bit of soil. That's you. Yes. Yeah. With the regular peppers, personally, I like to uh, I like to take the skin off of those ones after they come out. So usually, in that case, I will put them into a uh, into a paper. Let me put them into a brown paper bag and let the steam catch it, and then it makes peeling off that skin easier. Uh, if you want to go below the network, <laughs> you don't have to. It's a personal preference of mine. <laughs> And if you're going to use them for a sauce, though, I would recommend taking that extra step of peeling off the skin. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I would say if that's the case, I would encourage you to consider a different oil to saute in. Because olive oil is actually um, a low slow point oil, meaning that it's an oil that should only be used to finish foods and not be heated. Because once it heats, it changes the molecular structure of the oil and those health benefits go out the window. So if you're going to use an oil to cook, but if you want to use one that has a higher slow point, like a safflower oil or like a coconut oil. So olive oil you want to use only to finish. So um, like if you want to finish a salad with it or finish a dish with it, yeah, it, it was a the Mediterranean diet made everybody aware of olive oil and its benefits, which was great, but they didn't make the distinction that you're not supposed to eat it. So. There we go. Now you can see what it's going to look like when she starts. Miracles happen. <laughs> So this is the smoked paprika, the chili powder. Oh, more wood. All these spices help me. I don't have, I have to go, I only cook with garlic, you know, fresh garlic. It's about that. Yeah, totally. As long as you get them without salt. So like, if you want to use like dried, or like these are just dry versions of like the herbs. If you're gonna get them on their own, totally healthy. Highly recommend to always get them separate from like the salt. So don't buy garlic salt, just buy garlic powder. Don't buy onion salt, buy onion powder. Yeah. Fresh garlic or fresh, what do you call it? Like herbs. Okay. Got it. Yeah. I still say a lot of that. That's a good, it's a great idea. I used to be. Yeah, okay. I'd like, I'm heavy on the seasoning. Yeah, same. I, I just want to help.
right. what I do is I cut fresh garlic and olive oil on top and it's so delicious. Yeah. yeah. And, and if you have if you have parsley, then we could put that. Right. Yes. Yeah. Still, the bills would be bad sometimes. It would be a good it's a different thing. flavor over here. Yeah. It does. It just adds a, just a little bit of something. Now that's a pro. She's doing this without a spatula or a spoon. She's got her hands in the hot sauce. So that, that's dedication. <laughs> yeah, I know they have a different tolerance when it comes to eating yeah. out of my these days. <laughs> so don't have a spoon. I'm just going to get in there. Get in there. <laughs> I pulled it out of the oven with a paper towel the other day because one of my friends was like, are you, are you nuts? Like, it's a paper towel. I couldn't find a bottle. Yeah, I don't recommend anybody do that. Yeah. Do not do this at yes, all. No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> do not do this at all. Yeah. 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 Uh, I think that he gave me a couple of rounds of There, we're going to bring salt. <laughs> yeah, we're going to use it to Like, that's the thing with building flavors, especially cheese. Like, you got to have all of those, all of those notes. Like I say, I'm feeling my way through this because I'm making. A larger quantity than what the recipes you guys have, but if you make this at home, you're not gonna have to. You're not gonna have to feel your way through it. It's gonna. It's gonna work from to follow directly. I think you got the important stuff on your I can stir. Everybody wanted to be the guinea pig for the tribes? Very nice. The hummus? The hummus. Okay. There you go. There you go. That's a lot. Yeah. You want to mix that back in? Yeah. Okay. You know, this is in the ruins of it. All right. Mm -hmm.
You have a thumbs up or two thumbs up. One. We have our apple. And right now we're just gonna, I'm just going to, um, can I make up one of the boards just so I can fill which the oh. light? Just yeah. so much fun. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That would be start seeing how you're going to build your board. Yes. So that's what these are. The placemats, there are cutting boards and this is where you're going to be building. We're going to give you all the materials so you can build and create your own board. That's where you take pictures and that you your point. So the very sharp cutting board. Yes. All right. So, and I would say just because um, these are larger than how much food you're going to have, just to make sure that you prepare for good pictures. Keep everything kind of in the center, and I'll do that in my demonstration so you have a point of reference for your building. Good morning. Good morning. And the beauty of this board is really just to um, lay things out. I like to start with the, the larger items, so I'm going to do the uh, I'm going to do the hummus, and I'm also going to do the peas. That in a little rabbit or nice. Yeah, I think it might be nice. We have the rabbit, we can start dipping them out whenever you're ready. Yes. Yeah. The words are cuirate. It comes from two French words, chair, which means flesh, and cute, C U R T, which means foot. I love it. <laughs> Is everything we're not telling yeah. <laughs> Usually, when I um, we are using our imaginations. <laughs> <laughs> what we do to honor that is um, sometimes when I make these, I'll do it with a. Uh, you can do this a lot, thank you. Um, use like a. I make something called a mushroom bacon. So it's like a, a mushroom that kind of gives us that kind of meaty flavor, even though it's no meat in it. Um, and I don't know if anybody's ever had a uh, tempeh. It's a uh, fermented soybean. I'm gonna make some really good bacon. So that's another um, just alternative thing to see. I'm going to splay out my, lay out my apples. Starting a little bit of um, smoked paprika to give us some color here and flavor. Like when you build your board, I like to put the um, like the the larger items on first, and then you build everything else around that. I'm going to come up this even more to the center. Add some. Cucumber that you guys will get and roll them up. Use the two sticks.
can you can literally use almost anything on this on this board. Add some of the nuts in there. This is the uh, what is this? The many, um, yes, smaller peppers. That you can either decide to kind of set uh segment the colors or mix them up. That's totally your choice as an artist here. These are the salt of the salt. You know, and then I think there's the bill. These aren't the sweet points. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Start, uh, oh, yes. I want to have some All right, and then you, you get a lesson on how to do the uh, king pepper. Just roll it. Yeah, I'm just I think you're almost done. So we'll start passing out to all the different items in a little bit, right? Yeah. So everybody can start doing their plating. Thank you. If you'd like, you can actually start now. Okay. Oh, yeah, that's fine. So now that we've done that, I think we're going to talk about. I'm going to start passing out mm -hmm. the vegetables and the meat. So before you start eating, the idea behind this is to then have you plate the way you know, make everything look beautiful on your plate, and it should take pictures. Yes. Um, and then so Tabitha, while we're handing out everything, Tabitha is going to do a presentation on how to take pictures uh, with your phone. Okay. So I am. That's why we have this. 
Yes, there you go. And that's why we have Brandy here, because we know that she is going to make something that is healthy and excellent. Exactly. So we're going to point you over in this direction. Okay. And uh, you want me to start the share? Yeah. Okay. So you should be able to see up on front. So that will make it a lot easier. Okay. And I'll start handing out all the food. Yeah, so you can start. <laughs> Okay, hi everybody. My name is Tabitha Rosa, the technology instructor here at RSS. And today I'm going to just show you some quick tips on how to take good shots with your smartphone camera. So who here today has taken some good shots on their phone? Now, some people, okay. I'm going to go over three important things today. We're going to go over how to change the exposure of a photo, how to use the camera flash, and how to zoom into a camera. Those are the three main things, well, the three main tips that you should follow when you are going to take a, a photograph with your smartphone. So the first thing is, how do we adjust the focus and the exposure? Because sometimes when we take a photo, sometimes it could be too bright, or it could be too dark, or sometimes the background is blurry, right? So there's a simple way that we can fix that. And exposure, right? Exposure just means brightening or darkening the shots. So if you feel like it's too dark, maybe go here, maybe there's not too much light where you are sitting. I'm going to show you how to brighten it up or to darken. Usually people darken photos to make it more dramatic. So today you want, you're taking the photo of your food today, you want it to make it more dramatic. You would darken it a little bit more instead of having too much brightness to the board. So um, some people, if you want to take off your smartphone, if not, just follow along and look at the screen with me. But if you have your smartphone now and we go to the camera app, when we take a picture, all we have to do is just tap on the screen of where we want the exposure to be with the photo. So if we look here at the example, I also printed it out for everyone today. You can see here, the person is taking a photo of mountains, right? And they want the area of the mountains to be brighter or to be darker. So with their finger, all they did was tap on the screen of where the mountains are located. So when you're ready to take a picture of your board and you want a section of your board to be darker or brighter, you're just gonna tap on the screen with your finger. And while you're tapping on the screen with your finger, you can either adjust it up or down without let, letting go of your finger. And you can see here on the screen, it kind of gives like a yellow square box when you, hold, when you press down on the screen. And if you lift your finger up and down, you can make it brighter or you can make it darker. Like, like a sun image. Yeah, it kind of looks like a sun image as well if you do with your finger, if you try it out today. Yes, correct. Um, yes, you can try that out. Any questions on that from anybody? And what's right? Yeah, this is fine. That's yeah. It's an iPhone or Android, doesn't matter whichever one you have. So with your finger right, if you have your camera app out, tap on the screen and don't let go of your finger. You bring it up or down 
to adjust the brightness of the portrait. And you could play around with that, right? That's the change. You want to hold it, hold you keep your finger on the screen as you move it up. I have to change the screen. Yeah, you have to go to the camera app. Camera, the camera app. So now that we know how to adjust the exposure with our finger moving it up and down, another important thing that I just want to share with everybody is turning on your camera flash. I don't know if today we would need it because there's some areas where we're sitting that it's already bright enough. But if we just look on the screen very quickly, right, these are the camera flash icons. And I'm just going to quickly explain the three of them. On the left hand side, you can see that there's a camera flash with a strike through it. That means that your camera flash is off, right? So when you take a photo, the flash is not going to turn on if you see that icon. <laughs> yeah, yes. Uh, no, no, no. Yeah. yeah, that is that. Yes. The one on the middle, you can see that there's no slash through it. That means that the camera is already going to know the brightness wherever you're going to take the picture. So it's automatically going to turn on the flash if it feels that wherever you are is too dark. So that is like the automatic mode. So it'll turn on the flash if it feels as though it's too dark outside and it needs to brighten it up. And if you want to manually turn on the flash, you want to make sure that your camera flash is in yellow all the way on the right hand side. So if you have your phone with you and you look at the top of your screen, all the way on the left hand side corner, you may see a little flash icon. And you can see, you can tell by the color of the flash symbol of whether it's on or off. If, if it's off, it has a slash to it. If it's manually on, it's in yellow. And if there's no slash to it, that means that if it sees that the area is dim, it will turn on automatically. That's it, I put it on the table. Okay, Deborah tried it out for us to make sure. Yeah. And the one on the yes. right? Well, the one on the right are different features with the iPhone. It could either be a light photo, which is something different, which is that when you take a photo, it has a, a moving image to it. Any questions on that? Anybody? Usually when I take a picture, the three things are done here. Which which you know with the slash and the middle and stuff. Because you have to manually tap on it to change it if you want. Yeah. So you want to tap on that flash. It's want to manually keep it off. I guess I never noticed it. I guess it's always there. But it is always there, yeah. But you usually just leave it alone. I leave it alone and that's like I really want that effect with the camera flash on. Then I'm manually going to tap on that flash symbol to turn it on. If not, I just leave it alone and the camera will tell whether or not it's too dim outside. So how do I go back to the right now? So how was it before? So right now it's currently off. You have your flash off. If you tap on it one time, then it will automatically turn on if it feels like it's too dark wherever you are. Just move it out. Yeah, so you can leave it like that. So, Okay, and the last thing is Zoom. Uh, how do we zoom into a photo? So when you do your boards, they maybe want to take a certain area of the board. On all iPhones and all Android phones, it's very simple of how to zoom in. 
Um, one simple way is you could use two fingers, like if you're pinching the screen, you can do this kind of movement onto the screen and it will zoom into wherever you want to take. If you do not want to do this kind of pinching in motion, all the way at the bottom of your iPhone screen has a little numbers where you can zoom in. It says maybe one or two at the bottom of the screen, or maybe it says 0 0.5. That can zoom in or zoom out. Not all models have the option at the bottom that has these numbers on the screen that you can see. If you don't see the numbers at the bottom of the screen, if we all look at the TV where the arrow is pointing, you see that there's some numbers at the bottom. Yes. If you do not have that, you do have an older iPhone or Android version. So you have to manually use two fingers and point the screen to zoom in. And I can go around very quickly just to show everybody where it is. So this is the last section. And if you guys want to start lighting, that's what they the, the, um, oh, okay. the white mat. So you can take the vegetables and things and start right can I have the other um, yours to do with the older models? Yeah. 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 Okay. Anybody else? So I'm gonna give you each a couple of seed picks so you can make your roses. And then start plating onto your back. Anybody else need me to go around and show them anything that I went on the presentation today? This is great. There you go. Does anybody like to try making a rose out of a cucumber? Anyway, the seeds put it on the mat. You can take everything off, but the mat's all clean. That will be your board. And it's going to start cleaning. And then it will Make sure to take a picture of your board. And if you have social media, I think so. Yeah. If anybody has social media, they can make it and us. If anybody has an Instagram or Facebook, after you take your photo, you can tag us at our page RSS. Uh, the name? Uh, I think it's. Let me get it. Yeah. RSS Ageless is our Instagram. And our Facebook is RSS Center for Age Living. And if you don't know how to do that, Tabitha, yeah, I can help you. Too. If you have an Instagram or Facebook. And if you don't, we would love to have you share with us. If it's okay, I would love to send it to me. And then I would love to share it or your friends. So you can show people what you're talking about. So, yeah. Yeah, so make sure you share the photo with us then. Yeah. <laughs> I love our Is it okay if I take a picture and share it? So we have to That's no, that's the chair. Yeah, I see the heart. No, I 
bringing this stuff in so you have this I think I'm stacking stuff up for you. 
Are you going to keep the um, juice? Yeah. Uh, well, B. Well, I'm playing base anything. It's in my blood. I can't help. Even though I should be doing more healthy, but it's so hard. That's my problem. Vegetables. All <laughs> My I remember my brother would just sit there and he couldn't eat. So once my mother said, I got up to So he swallowed the one bite of it. He said, No, you have a car. You had to go. Here's your photos. I show you that. You had to eat it. All right, I'll have to get us a little bit. I <laughs> So anybody want to share on social media, do you can tell Twitter how to share or can I give you my email address and would I would you be willing to send them to me so I can print or share or they have a part of I just want that created. So, you have my email. I have your email. So, you can send it to me. I'll email you that. I'll say, you know, same thing. Yes, I have your email. So, if any, does everybody have my email? Thank you. 
Yeah, if you put that back into a chocolate, 